Baruch Hashem, it is day number 183 of our daily study of Rambam Sefer Mitzvahs. In the three chapters a day of Mishnah Torah, we are finishing Hilchas Chagiga. You're going to say, hold on, how are we finishing Hilchas Chagiga? We just started it yesterday when we finished Hilchas Korban Pesach. That's true, but Hilchas Chagiga only has three chapters. So we did one chapter yesterday, and now we're doing chapters two and three today. And then when we finish that, we're going to go into Hilchas Bechayrois, the firstborn, firstborn animals. Remember the, remember the theme of this book is Korbanes, is animal sacrifices. Okay, so let's do our mitzvahs today. Positive commandment 54 is rejoicing on the festivals. V'samachta b'chagecha, rejoicing on the festivals. Now, rejoicing on the festivals means a lot of things that we can relate to, like uh, eating meat and drinking wine, uh, wearing new clothing, buying gifts for one's family. But primarily, the biblical commandment is a korban, a, an, an animal offering. Now, if you're keeping track, if you're uh, keeping count, this is the third animal sacrifice that we've spoken about in conjunction with the festivals. Because remember, yesterday we spoke about the oilas ria, the elevation offering that you make just by showing up when you show up at the pilgrimage festival in Jerusalem. So you're supposed to bring an elevation offering. Uh, we spoke about yesterday the Chagiga, the festival offering, and now this is another offering, a third offering, which is the Simcha offering, which is a Shlomim offering, which we've spoken about uh, before in the previous Sefer of Avaida, we spoke about Shlomim offerings. And there's a certain Simcha to that because uh, Shlomim offerings are eaten not just by the Kohen, but also by the owner who brought the sacrifice. So you're getting to celebrate and eat some meat. Uh, so that's Positive commandment 54. Negative commandment 156 is sort of a corollary to a mitzvah that we learned yesterday. And remember we said that when you show up in Jerusalem for the pilgrimage festival, you should bring your korbonis. So here's the negative commandment not to, the prohibition not to show up empty-handed. And in order to not transgress, one has to at least bring the aforementioned oila Surya and chagiga, those two sacrifices. And of course, also, there's that third korban we just mentioned a minute ago, the, uh, the shlamim. Okay, negative commandment 229 is not to forget about the levi. When you celebrate on Yom Tif, you have to make sure to include him. Remember... Uh, we had the, back in Sefer Zroim, the book of agricultural laws, we had a whole thing about about uh, Hilchas Maestros, about the, the tithes. And remember, we give those agricultural gifts to the Levium because they don't have their own land for farming. So they're very much dependent on us. So there's a specific prohibition when you celebrate, do not forget to include the Levi in your celebration. I should also mention our first commandment that we learned today which was to rejoice in the festivals. It also mentions the Levi, as well as some other people who it's very important to remember when we are celebrating. It says, Rejoice on your festival. Ata, you. Uvincha, uvitacha, your son and your daughter. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Va'avdcha, va'mosecha, and your servant and your maidservant. Okay, they're part of the household. Va'halevi, the Levite, doesn't have his own land to farm. Va'hager, the convert. Va'hayosem, the orphan, the halmona, and the widow, Ashebeshorecho, who are in your gates. Um, these are people who are often overlooked or excluded, God forbid. And so, in order to properly rejoice, you can't just rejoice with you and your household, but you have to include these people and make sure they are not, God forbid, left out. Next, at the end of Hilchas Chagiga, the Rambam talks about the mitzvah of Hakel. So let's do that. Positive commandment 16 is Hakel. Hakel means to gather or the gathering, a massive gathering. It is the entire Jewish people once in seven years. On the second day of Sukkot, on, uh, in, the, in, in the first year of the sabbatical cycle, remember when we learned Hilcha Shemitah, when we learned uh, about the sabbatical seven-year cycle? So this is in the eighth year, meaning the first year of the new cycle. On the second day of Sukkot, they would gather the entire Jewish nation, men, women, and children, in Jerusalem, and the king would read from a Torah scroll, and the intention was to have an experience that would give somebody a feeling of what it was like to stand in awe with the entire united Jewish nation at the time of the giving of the Torah at Sinai. Okay, positive commandment, 79. Now we're transitioning to Hilchas Bechayres, the laws of the firstborn, firstborn 
animals, kosher animals, livestock. And the law is that when the first offspring of the of that mother, so that animal becomes automatically sanctified, automatically sanctified and uh, set aside as a carbon, which is then brought to the kohen. The kohen has to sprinkle the blood on the altar and burn the fats, but then the kohen eats from the flesh. Uh, it's important to know that this mitzvah actually, although we can only bring the sacrifice when the temple is standing, and even when the temple was standing, it was only done when the animal is born in the land of Israel, but... The mitzvah still stands, even though you can't bring it as a sacrifice, um, even outside of the land of Israel, and even after the temple is not currently standing, which means, and we don't really encounter this in our lives, but when Jews were more, or more Jews had agrarian lifestyles, you would sometimes see a becher walking around, uh, not being uh, tended because it's not your personal property. It's sacred, and you're not allowed to get any benefit from it, and you can't shear it or anything. So in the shtetl, you'd have sometimes have these uh, bachoyer, firstborn animals, kind of wandering around. It was like a part of shtetl life. Okay, those are our mitzvahs today. We'll see you for more, God willing, tomorrow.